You know, um, it was a great quarter, and, and we've always been constructive, but hoping that the company would get a little more focused on profitability, um, which they have. I think, you know, the theme definitely is um, this is a sort of transformative year in 2020, um, pulling the profitability target in again for the basically the third time in a row. I think is very important, and I think it's, you know, the company saying that in our core businesses where confident and you know happy with our market position and now it's time to sort of grow more responsibly so um, definitely a good move for the public markets uh, Lloyd let me talk about what it means to grow more responsibly uh, responsibly it also means to grow slower probably yeah it does and and that was something I think investors were looking at very closely on the quarter and and came away pleasantly surprised uh, the ride business did slow down the gross bookings in the ride business were around 20 percent constant currency uh, but Uber Eats actually surprised to the upside on the bookings growth, 74 percent constant currency. So total company growth uh, on the bookings line, 30 percent, still pretty healthy uh, given everything they're doing to, to focus on profitability. What's, what's a fair market value for this, the stock at this point? We have a price target of $54. And, and what do they have to do to get there? Yeah, look, I think the, the most important thing is to continue to show gains in profitability and then secondly, uh, avoid you know any sharp slowdown in bookings growth. You know I think they're doing a very good job walking that line. And so as long as we see progress towards profitability, uh, we we think the shares march higher. Michael, what are the sticking points as you talk to investors about the strategy? Obviously, everybody wants the company to move toward profitability, but uh, has the company made the case that you know Uber Eats is worth the investment? That the opportunities there, the economics of that business can improve. You know, um, it was really great the way management handled the EATS discussion last night because what they basically said is um, we're number one or two in half of the countries in which we operate the EATS business. And where in countries where we are not one or two, we're developing a plan to either become one or two organically or through acquisition uh, or to exit. And we saw them during the quarter exit um, Uber EATS India. Um, you know, and then pursue that market through partnership. And, you know, that strategy seems to be working really well. I think the bigger long-term question for Uber is um, whether or not they try to make the jump to, like, the super app status in, in Asia. You have, um, you know, super apps where consumers basically do everything from book a ride to order dinner to, um, you know, get a dog walker. And, you know, that um, strategy has not really migrated uh, westward to the U.S. yet, but Uber as a daily use app has that possibility, and I think as we look out a couple of years, that's one of the key things to watch. Michael, which though, but let me ask you about the super, strategy. Let me ask you about that super app strategy. How much of that, or maybe it's just straight option value, obviously at this point for that to ever happen. But you look at what the stock is doing right now. Is that is there any of that built in there? I really don't think so. I mean, you know, you look at the um, at the mobile economy, and it's moved away from the browser into apps, and so. Um, you know, you really need um, to have a daily use app in order to have a shot at, you know, cracking into that market. Um, so, you know, I don't think that's in the stock yet, but, you know, it could be over the next year or two. If they pick off, and I'll ask this to Lloyd and Michael, if they pick off one of their competitors in the uh, food delivery category, how important is that? And how do you think people are going to look at that? I'll, I'll take that first. Uh, look, I think any consolidation in food delivery will be welcome, even if it's not even directly involving Uber. You know, if you saw, uh, you know, Grub and DoorDash get together, right. it, it would be helpful for the unit economics of the space. I think ideally investors we speak to would prefer to see, you know, Uber as a consolidator in the U.S. Right, right now they have about 20 percent market share. Generally speaking, in these Internet marketplace businesses, you want to be the right. player with over 50 percent share uh, and when you are, you get the bulk of the profits in the space. Right. Uh, right. But as long as there's any consolidation, I think people would welcome it uh, in, in the eats business. Right. Uh, Ten seconds to each. If you have one question for Dara, because he's going to be on in literally 50 minutes from now, what would you ask? Michael? Um, you know, I, I just really like to know uh, the strategy for uh, moving into other businesses besides the businesses that they're in now, which they're okay. doing a great job executing. We'll count that as a super app question. Lloyd? Uh, long term, how do you continue to grow the TAM uh, for the market if, if you're raising price? Uh, okay. where, does that, where does that long term growth come from? Both fair questions.